This is a conversation I had with uh, Joe Weider and Leroy Colbert on July 26, 2009. And what was special about this conversation is uh, Leroy Colbert was there at the beginning with Joe Weider when Joe Weider built his uh, bodybuilding empire. And so this friendship they have goes back over 50 years. So we, what we want to do is we want to clear up any uh, myths or lies about uh, this great man, Joe Weider, and everything that he has contributed to bodybuilding and to the worldwide phenomenon that is what it is uh, today. And this is an amazing man. He has a lot of great, amazing stories. And I hope you enjoy this as much as I did meeting with him and talking to him. The guy's a legend. And uh, well, actually, two great legends, Leroy Colbert. He's also the uh, first man to build 21-inch arms back when the experts and the doctors said it wasn't even possible. But that shows what they know. And uh, Joe Weider is like, the guy's a legend. What, what more can I say is if you know anything about bodybuilding, then you know his name is synonymous with So, so Joe, I'm, I'm taking from this conversation, you never rode a motorcycle. Me? I would Why would I put myself in, in, in a risk? Right. So you're saying like a lot of things in life that are like riding a motorcycle, you would not even do because you're just like, why I take don't the wanna, chance? I wouldn't attempt it. Maybe if I, I don't know, my, my mind was on my work and I was dedicated to doing my job. I mean, what's it wasn't going to do with that. I was in Canada. I could have been a mountain skier, playing on ice. We did some ice skating, but I wouldn't be a hockey player. I wouldn't fly in the air with skis. And I think it made me the thrill. What the thrill I had was to put in other magazines and pictures and seeing people improve themselves, rewriting to me how happy they are that I helped them in the way. That was my thrill, thrill. Not to go on a motorcycle, <laughs> not to fly in the air. So, but so, now, so now what you're saying then, if everybody thought like you, there'd be nobody doing anything but what you're doing. What no. a world is it be? Maybe it's not true. You Maybe think some guy just no wants to fly. They fly, they can fly in the air, parachute, that's what they want to do, they do it. But they got to play for the, the results. Pay the price, that's what I feel. Okay, that's I'm it. Paying, I'm paying the price. You know, I like my work. <laughs> I love bodybuilding. I like what I was doing. I was encouraging the world to exercise, take care of themselves, get strong, and so forth. The salvation that was about. my work. And I'm not going to destroy my work for riding a motorcycle. <laughs> really Joe's really, what I tell you, you got to tell him, tell him because he's a motorcycle rider. So what? Uh, you but we don't that motorcycle. Yes, I do, but no, I, I understand where he's coming from. He's, he is, he's one of those people that truly found something he loved to do and that was his work and his enjoyment. That's right. You know, a lot, a lot of people, we, yeah, a lot of people, we have work and we have our enjoyment and usually they're not the same. And he found something that he loved to do both. I mean, he is, he is really, I'm telling you, his dedication to this is just well, that's what's fascinating me. And I, I, I've been with him for over 50 years. And uh, Joe, and when I first started with Joe, <coughs> I'll never forget when Joe at that time, <coughs> he was making $100, $75 a week. And Joe says, Leroy, you stick with me and you'll be making two and a quarter a week. I'll never forget that too. I thought, I said, Joe is Jesus. I said, Jesus, two and a quarter a week. Why, that was unbelievable. I said, I'll never have to work. That was in the 50s? Oh, yeah. That was in the 50s. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was in the 50s. I want to look into the future for yourself. Well, I don't know. Now, let's get to the gym. I want to get to the gym. Let's get to the gym. Why did you? We must. Oh, well, we the first thing you got to do, Leroy, is to do your eyes. You don't cover up. With your smartness, with your intelligence, <laughs> with your charm, when you do something. Joe. It's got to be a tough... How many years ago I got hurt? Fifty... I was twenty-one. 
I'm 70. That's how many years? You're, you're 77 now? Yeah, so, I'll be 77. I'm going so 76, to 76, 21, that's what, 55? 55 years ago. God. 55 years ago. <clears throat> hey, so hey, I know. I was with Joe. You know each other for how long 60 now? years. Wow, that's a long, that's a long friendship. Because, um, you're there. You're there. And at the you know beginning. what? It's just I hate to say it, but from that day in 16 Hopkins Avenue, only him and I left. Only a You know that? Beautiful. When I take, and I, yeah, go ahead. When I talk to mother to you, you were not talking. You were not to me. You were not talking. You were not. You were my father. And you, yeah, you, I right, because you know Joe. You let me argue with you. Let me take. <laughs> now was, was he? Like, he tells Leroy tells me stories that he was the only one that would argue with you of all the people that worked for you. At one that time, time I would get Joe. Anyone else argue with you, or is it just Leroy? You know, I saw Leroy. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Joe never. I never had the fear that Joe was going to take it personal. What? I never had the fear that you would take me talking back to you personally. You never did that. It was very. My mother well, was the same way. It seems it's like very, he didn't take anything personal. He didn't take anything personal. He was just hard. driven and just looked at everyone the same. Yeah. Well, yeah. He was. He was driven. I mean, he was. He did think. I used to step back and look and watch Joe. And Joe, Joe had a whole lot of magazines at one time. Yeah. You know. Yeah. He was. So at, at uh, one time, what was the most magazines you had coming out? Twelve. Twelve magazines, and you were one. you were in charge of every single one, right? So that's such. So he had no time. That no, was his time. The much. distribution I, company went out, of, and that's what it hurt you. I didn't have much money, so I American put out a couple of magazines, and it was selling good. And the American news company wanted to get more magazines, and they couldn't get the good my magazines that were selling. But every time I came up with an idea, it was so good. So they told me, you know, Joe, you have a lot of talent. We're going to pay the printer, and we're going to pay the shipping expenses. And you put up the magazine, and we get back our money, and you can get the profit. So I didn't need anything. They did all the jobs, and it took my work.